Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to show you how you can add WebP image support into Photoshop. So you have the option to both import and export WebP images to and from Photoshop. If you didn't know the WebP format already, it's been around for a while. It's been developed by Google as far as I can tell, and it kind of brings the best of the GIF or GIF PNGs and JPEGs together into one portable format. It's something that we as creative professionals may come across from time to time and have to import a file that is available as WebP, or we may be asked to export something as a WebP image. And there's converters around, but it would be just much nicer if we had that natively in Photoshop. And there is a little plugin available by the same developers. And I'll show you how to install that because it's a tad tricky for those who are not familiar with how GitHub works. So um, first of all, this is uh, what the developers say about WebP, in case you haven't heard of the image format. A new image format for the web. WebP is a modern image format that provides superior lossy and lossless compression for images on the web. Using WebP, webmasters and web developers can create smaller, richer images that make the web faster. We also like saying web a lot. So I suppose what's important as a takeaway is it can contain transparency. WebP can contain transparency and it can also contain animations and it can also be used for static images. So that is all contained in WebP. That is how some people get an animated YouTube avatar, by the way, because I believe WebP is accepted as an upload or at least was at one point and animated GIFs are not. So that's how you can sometimes get around this limitation that people don't let you upload animated GIFs where you really want them, but sometimes they let you they let you use WebP. So there we go. So they explain on one of their pages here where you can get this plugin for Photoshop from. And I will link to all this in the description of this video. And there's also an article with written instructions on my website that I'll also link to. So it tells you here, uh, go over to the GitHub repo, download the file and copy it into the correct locales on your computer. So on the Windows machine, that is wherever uh, Photoshop installed. So program files, Adobe Photoshop plugins, that's where that thing needs to go. And on the, on the Mac, it's in applications, Adobe Photoshop plugins. So I'll show you where that is. But most importantly, how do we actually, what, what, what do we do once we're on the GitHub repository on the website here? How do we, what, what do we do? Well, GitHub, GitHub really hosts the source code of that plugin here in several directories. And it has uh, descriptions of uh, how to use it, how to build it yourself. But of course, we're creatives, we're not coders, we're not hackers, we don't know how to do any of these things. So there's also releases, and this is really where you need to go to. And the releases combine a snapshot of the code in time, but they also allow the developers to add binaries, i.e. pre-compiled things to a release. So if I go over here, I see a long list of things that have been released for this project. So by the time you're watching this video, there might be other versions here. The latest one at the top is probably the one that we want to focus on. And it has assets down here. If you open that little disclosure triangle, that is where you can actually download either a snapshot of the source code or a pre-compiled binary for your platform. So I'm on Windows here. I'm going to go and click that. Uh, just left click it and then I'm going to go and save this to my downloads folder. And that is not a zip file now, that is literally the file that we need to plop into our Photoshop um, folder here. So the uh, .8bi file, don't really know what that is, but I guess Photoshop understands it, which is awesome. So we save it on the Mac, same thing, you have to unzip it on the Mac. But that is literally it. So then once we go uh, to our, hello, downloads folder, was that it? Uh, yes, that it, it was, it was already it. So once we're here, latest file here, that's the plugin. I go and copy this over and then this is on a Windows machine. Now you head over to where Photoshop is installed. So in my case, that's on the C drive under program files under Adobe. And in my case, it's Photoshop 2020, probably different version by the time you're watching this video. In that Photoshop folder, you find a plugins folder, double click that and just paste it in here. I've already done it, WebP Shop 030 Win X64. There we go, that's it. Oh, that's another exciting thing to remember. This is for Windows 64 bit. Uh, Mac only ever has 64 bit now. I don't know if Windows still has 30, 32 bit versions, but this only works with the 64 bit version of Windows.
So once that's in there, oh yeah, Photoshop should be closed at that point. If it's open, just close it and reopen it. Mine is already open. And I've just opened a random image here. And the way you use this thing inside Photoshop is uh, that you don't have, sadly, you don't have yet an option to head over to export and then uh, go to export as and then pick webp that's uh, that is not working right now but i believe the team are working on integrating that here so that is not something that's available right now we have to do the old-fashioned way and head over to file save as and as soon as we do that we get the save as type at the bottom here that we can pick uh, which what format we'd like to save the image as and in that case that's down here under webp it also works by bringing images in so either by file open or uh, you can import them as, uh, as as you would regularly do using place embedded that also recognizes webp images but yeah just to prove a point if you go and open something the webp format is now also in this long list of things here but it'll recognize this automatically that is how it works i hope this was helpful as i said links to the things i've mentioned like the github repo and the description and my article with screenshots that illustrate this a little bit better are in the description of this video I hope this was helpful. If you know other creative professionals that could benefit from this information, then please share this video and spread the word about the WebP plugin for Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.